Welcome to MMA FanCast. My name is Luke, and I am excited to have Craig Berry back on the show. Craig, welcome back. Thanks for having me back. I am super excited that after uh, after a, a pretty much a long time, you had a bad injury, you had a rehab, you had to come back. You now have won your first MMA fight. Super exciting. So congratulations to you. You've got a big victory under your belt now. Um, we've seen you a lot in the 247 cage. You're, you're a super exciting fighter, even though some of your fights haven't been going your way. So let's jump into Braun the Berg 16. What was it like in there to, to get your hand raised for the first time? Yeah, it was great. Um, it was definitely a long time coming. Um, just like some, some bad things happened in the first three, like the close split decision loss and the arm, uh, snap and then in my last fight uh, that guy was a, mario he was a really good wrestler so um yeah. but this fight it felt like it all just finally came together and um i definitely do want to give props to my opponent because he stepped in there like on a week's notice and he was a real tough kid and he um i think he's only been training like all mixed together mma i think he's only been training like a year he said so um so i really appreciate him stepping in there but um but it did feel good to finally get the win Sure. Well, I love the fact that you're respectful of your opponent and Stout. You're from the Academy of Pittsburgh. Stout Pittsburgh is a huge gym. Both you guys produce a lot of great fighters, and it's probably a testimony to Jao Martinez, your opponent, but also his coaches that were willing to have their fighter take a fight um, on one week notice in order to, because you fell through. A couple of your opponents fell through, and, and I was seeing that um, on the Pittsburgh matchmaking site. I kept thinking. Man, because, you know, you've had a rough start, like you said, and I'm glad you got in there. Now, we said it on the broadcast. Don't know if you watched it. I think it was my partner, Ryan Kavanaugh, mentioned. Uh, we were talking about it on your walkout that you're, you're a very impressive up-and-coming fighter for a guy who prior to your fight had no wins. Obviously, the split decision loss in your debut could have gone either way. The arm injury is one of those freak things, 30 seconds in. Um, you got held down. By Mario, it would have been interesting uh, to kind of see if it was more on the feet, you know, those type of things. So I'll ask you, because we, we'll talk about the fight here in a second, but I'll ask you the obvious question. A lot of freak things went against you, but you were 0-3. Why keep training at the academy? I know I know, Kama loves you. I know all the coaches are big fans, but it, it's a rough start to anybody's fighting career. So uh, tell us a little bit about what, what had you continue to train after you started as an 0-3 fighter? That's actually a really good question. Um, I guess maybe it's a good thing, but I never really thought about it too much, and that might be the answer. But um, sure. but I definitely uh, – definitely people close to me were doubting, and um, it is – it does get a little bit sad, and, like, pe you know, like, people close to you, they start to question, like, why are you doing this? And then – just other people in general are just saying, like, I told you so. Um, so it's definitely not the easiest thing to be 0-3, especially when, like, some, some loved ones are, like, not necessarily – they're not doubting you, but they're questioning you. But um, but I think it's just – this is the only thing I see myself doing right now, and it's what gives me energy and gets me happy. And, um, and definitely when I got my hand raised, it was, like, validation. Like, I mean – some like adversity. I think everyone comes out of adversity uh, like a stronger, better person. And um, yeah, I don't know. There's nothing in my life that I've appreciated or that's like helped me has come easy. So I think that I just knew if I just kept pushing, kept going. Even if I went own four, own five, I don't think I would stop. I would keep going. So I guess that's the best answer I can give. To well, that. that is a, that is very deep answer when you when you really talk about it. That when people expect adversity, they handle it better than when people kind of expect things to be smooth. So the fact that you kind of have that attitude that if you, if you like what you're doing, you're willing to put the work in physique wise, you look like very well built, very athletic for 145. You have a great physique. So prior to MMA training at the, at the uh, Academy of Pittsburgh, were you already in ridiculously good shapers like like from just life in general or did that come from training uh 
training with the legendary comma, the Death Star Worthy and all those monsters. I appreciate that. That's a huge compliment. So thank you. Um, I I think the physique thing is like, it might be secondary to the training. I, I mean, I always played hockey mm. and I definitely, I think I played hockey so much, like for so many years straight without really like uh, having a knowledge of like um, of the off ice workouts that I was pretty like well developed, like in my legs and stuff, but like the rest of my body was definitely lacking like my hips were super weak and I didn't really have any like tone on my upper body but um training MMA I think definitely helped out and um I've gotten a lot more knowledge especially from like Dave who does the strength and conditioning and some other people along the way um but I do I if I go in there and I haven't been doing everything like outside of the cage type stuff like working out running then I just don't like to me that's like mentally I just can't step in there confident. So I always like, even if we do something like if we have a two hour MMA practice, I have to go to the gym beforehand or afterwards. So I mean, that might contribute. Yeah, that to could it. have something to do with it. Well, yeah. that actually goes, that goes a long way to your mentality. The fact that you, you want to really emphasize the strength and conditioning portion in addition, you know, it was, a, it was an old sort of boxer mindset that, that they got cardio from just yep. boxing, whether it's heavy bag work or obviously that's gone out because now boxers do a ton of work. But um, I, I highly recommend to everybody, obviously you can get good workout in training, but you should probably have a strength and conditioning. You mentioned coach Dave Sachs, who's a legendary MMA fighter in his own right. And I had a great time having him on um, MMA fan cast this show uh, maybe about a year ago. And it was incredible to hear kind of his story, but I know that it was announced or at least, I think Justin Patton announced it that no, it wasn't Justin Patton. Maybe it was somebody announced that he that Coach Dave Sachs is moving to New York. Yeah, he is. He put it on his Instagram. Okay. Uh, I, it might have been a month or two ago, but um, yeah, he's moving. He's going to get his master's degree. I forget the exact thing, but it has to do with like the strength and the conditioning. Um, so. He, yeah, he's um he's he's like a genius. Um, yeah, I mean, as I've, you know, you've talked to him. I was gonna say I've had him on the show. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of a lot of fighters have. Um, I think it is Justin. Yeah, it is Justin Patton because his strength and conditioning is with David Sachs. Because I've seen a ton of videos of him doing various lifts and various workouts with Coach Dave Sachs. So hopefully, you guys can continue to follow uh, the regimen that's obviously made a lot of great fighters um, under. Coach Dave Sachs, but th that's a great thing for him to be doing, kind of already a legend, already super well established. He was on the show talking about getting fighters ready to do bare knuckle boxing. He's just a monster when it comes to coaching. But let's get back, if you can, because I know it's still fresh. Your win was a couple of days ago. Let's go round by round. You ended up winning as well as you could as a decision, 30-27, so you won every round. So obviously that's great, but the, take it round by round. What what do you remember from each round, um, and kind of how did you feel in between each round? So you cut out for that last. What was the last thing you said? Uh, what do you remember from each round, and then how did you feel oh. in between each round while you were getting ready for the next one? Gotcha. Um. Yeah. Well, after the first round, I remember. Um. Well, in, in the first round, when I I think that. I was trying to carve – I'm talking about the head kick. I really – I did not mean to kick him in the head. I felt really bad about it. I'm not – like, I never want to be, like, even put in that boat with, like, someone who's trying to, like, cheat or anything. Um, So I was trying to carve my kick up under his elbow, and I think it, it went off his shoulder and it glanced him in the head. So that was definitely the big thing that yeah. out from round one. So did I, did I lose you or am I still good here? Yeah, we'll just keep going. I think the internet isn't the best, uh, right. but we'll just keep rolling. Um, yeah, that was obviously, uh, you know, that's a big mental hurdle to get over uh, because it was an illegal strike. Chip Snyder ended up warning you. I believe he didn't take a point. Um, that's, a, that's a type of strike. Yeah. You could have taken a point. Obviously, in retrospect, even if he had taken a point, that would have been a 9-9 round. You still would have ended up winning the next two rounds. It is it is a little tricky with the with the rule set, but 
At the same time, I think you, you come across as somebody that obviously really cares, doesn't want anything to be illegal or any type of, of dirty. It's good that you have the hip flexibility to be able to throw it. Clearly down the road um, at advanced amateurs, you still can't throw it ahead. At least in the state of Pennsylvania, it's only pros that can throw it ahead. But I often tell people that when they're training MMA in rule sets that limit things, they should be training at least one rule set ahead. So the rules of ground and pound in advanced amateur, you know, you could still be training that even though you can't use it. So um, obviously that was a big part of round one. What was it like getting to the end of round one? Obviously your elbows intact. Mario by that point had already come up with the game plan to, to take you down. So like this was by far your best fight up to that point when you got to the break of the first round. So what was the, what was, uh, what was the advice from your corners? Kind of, what was it like kind of doing well already uh, after your first round? Yeah, so after the first round, um, it was standing the whole first round. Um, and um, I remember Coach Chris Williams, he wanted me to let my hands go even more. Because sure. um, I was – yeah, he was like, he was like, it's working. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep letting the hands go. And um, and I think Dave was just telling me to breathe. Don't worry about the head kick right now. Yeah. Um, because like I said, it was just I I probably should have just put it out of my mind. Like I know a fight's a fight, but it, I just I hate the thought of even like if I win, and then people are like, ah, oh, he threw a head kick. I just I don't want to be thought of like that. But either way, um, round two. I remember it was going well again, and then I believe that's whenever the first wrestling exchange happened. Um, I think he, uh, he initiated a clinch, and um, and I think my first takedown was – I think I got like a outside trip, right? Was that my first takedown? There were 16 fights yeah. Saturday. I'm going to have to rewatch everything, even though I that's called – I don't know. No, no, it's just really hard. We were talking, Ryan Kavanaugh. We're talking. You, you process everything, but we're gonna. I'm gonna have to rewatch. And, and that's a great shout out for for uh, two four seven live the app. It's a great program. Everybody should get it, download it, and then they can do a subscription to get the full catalog of all the fights. But uh, but how did you feel? How did you feel in the grappling exchanges? Uh, you know, he was known at least. But what I was told real quick, you know, as far as your opponent was that he had some Muay Thai experience. So obviously any type of stand up clinching Muay Thai has that background. So what was it like grappling the, the, the fight before your opponent who had a ton of experience? I think he had four or five fights before you or if I remember right, he had two and two or something, um, mm -hmm. if I remember right. But uh, Mario, um, he did a good job, you know, taking you down, flattening you out. That didn't really happen in this fight at all. So, so what was it like to be able to kind of win most of those exchanges? Yeah, it was nice. Um, once I got him to the ground, it felt um, everything felt familiar, and um, I actually didn't know much about him. I didn't know he had the Muay Thai background because um, I didn't want to be like asking because he trains at Stout, and I I go to Stout on Saturdays for the sparring. And I didn't want it to be a, like an awkward situation where I'm asking my friends like, hey, what's his background? What does he do? So um, I tr all I asked them was, hey, do you know him? I just want to give you a heads up. I'm fighting him. Like, it's just like, it's just purely just a fight. Nothing like no gym versus gym stuff. And um, so I had no idea what his background was. So I thought he was a grappler. So once we once I took him down, I was trying to be like extra careful on the ground with him and not give myself up or like get put myself in a submission um but for the most part everything on the ground felt good i've been going up to the mat factory obviously we have dave here with the wrestling and everything so um and just i've been spending more time with it so it definitely felt good it felt better than the last fight and it might have been also just because i initiate i didn't initiate the wrestling but i was able to get ahead of it like i was able to stay on top and be on the offense so i think that's another reason why it felt so good yeah, well, that, that obviously is why developing MMA from a non – you had a hockey background, but you didn't have a wrestling background. So that's what's great about training with really great teams, the Matt Factory. It's in their name. They love the, the grappling component. 
You're also training with one of the best striking coaches in Chris Williams and also uh, mm -hmm. Kama the Death Star Worthy. That's his gym. And he has a style, yeah. had a style, has a style that took him all the way to the UFC. And it was, you know, wrestling in reverse, use submissions when you have to, but basically keep it standing and become a strike fest. I mean, that's what he was known for. You already have that. Yeah. Technique. You already have that skill set. It's really just a matter of rounding it out so you can dictate where the fight where you want the fight to go. So, I mean, I am just thrilled. Let's end on the obvious question. It certainly didn't look like you took any damage. Your elbow looked great. We were commenting on that. Are you ready for Jim Mooney to match you for the July card? It's going to be a big July 15th card at Monroeville Convention Center. That will be Brawl in the Berg 17. Is that, is that where you will next see you? I'm not sure. I mean, I feel good. Just like some bumps and bruises, nothing serious. Um, I am trying to get my real estate license done. Oh. I got to take that test. Um, I just signed That's up important. for it today. Yeah, it's important. I got to become an adult. Um, but um, I would love to. My goal I, before the fight was um, this year, I want to get my record back to three and three. And I want to compete in either like a jiu-jitsu tournament or a boxing tournament. Um, so however that happens, um, like that's my main goal. Just get back to three and three, get even clean slate. So um, I July 15th sounds good. Um, I mean, not, I know Dave's leaving, but I'll, I'll talk to him, see what he says. I think I'll always talk to Dave even when he's gone. Um, I definitely trust him a lot. He's become like a huge part of my life. Sure. And um, but yeah, that'd be cool. I definitely would like to fight again, like soonish, just to keep myself like um, just in shape and keep myself in this mindset of like fight, not just take like a huge layoff and yeah, like only because the guys that train only when they're in training camp, you, you don't really grow. You kind of stay stagnant. So I'd like to make sure I'm continuing to grow. I definitely have to work on my uh, clinch work and like against the cage. I have a lot of work to do there. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff from the fight that I would like to do better. But um, like you said, I have like some of the best coaches in Pittsburgh. And I have like some of the best resources. So um, I'm going to make sure I use them all up and just keep doing what they tell me and we'll see and, where it goes. And that's the perfect mindset to have. You're young. You you have that, that eagerness, which is great. You have the humility to take the advice of the coaches that have been there and done a ton. So I'm glad you're doing so well. It's so nice to see kind of the, the comeback story from your elbow injury and to kind of be at the point where, where you can, get back on track where you want to be. Uh, Cole Masick, the former middleweight amateur champion of 247, uh, he's a real estate, so it's kind of cool. He trains out of uh, the Matt Factory, but it, it's kind of cool that you are going real estate. Thanks so much for coming on. I'm so excited to have you. This was Luke Payson from May Fake Us with Craig Perry. Thanks so much, buddy. Thank you. Thank you for continuing to have me on. Of course. All right. You take care.